Gaza's beaches may be kissed by the sun, but there the terms of endearment end. Over two million people are packed into a territory teetering on the brink of economic collapse. Unemployment is above 40%, over 80% depend on foreign aid, and after 11 years of Israeli blockade, even the horizon offers no prospect of escape. This water is so polluted with human sewage that even swimming is unsafe. And so, within sight of Israeli snipers, a protest camp, a bleak place, rich only in its list of grievances. Its inhabitants, even a seven-year-old child, bearing the scars of violence, which has left thousands injured by Israeli fire in the last few weeks. And Hassan Zorab, aged 19, about to risk his life and cross the border fence. Do you have nothing else to live for? You have no future? No, nothing. They've taken away our future. Palestine has two million people with many generations after me to take my place. You're smiling when you talk to me, but, but this could be a matter of life or death. What's the problem? There is no difference in dying. We're dead already. In a UN warehouse, they are unloading flour, cooking oil, sugar and dried milk. Rations which keep Gaza afloat. But aid workers here are all too aware that feeding stomachs isn't the answer to an ever-rising desperation and its impact on mental health. There is increasing signs of people being that desperate that they attempt to take their own life. Um, and my health colleagues tell me all the time, we cannot just focus on the physical rehabilitation. We must take on board that after more than 11 years of blockade, three wars, the traumatic incidents happening at the what is called the fence here right now, there are deep psychological and psychosocial scars. It costs about $80 million a year to keep half of Gaza's population alive. But in January, the Trump administration announced that it was cutting $90 million from the UN's budget, both here and in the West Bank, leaving all the UN's major aid programs at risk, including $8 million a year spent here in Gaza on mental health. On the fringes of Gaza City lives Nahed Shweik with her unemployed husband and six children. They're so poor that they have sold their fridge, cupboard and beds, along with part of their UN aid, for cash. Mental illness can have many causes, but Nahed blames her years of poverty for her wanting to take her own life. A year ago was the first time I tried to use a knife. Then I tried poison. I don't want to go out. I don't want to see anyone. I feel as if I'm suffocating. Nahed's bags full of pills include Prozac. Suicide is not only illegal here, but forbidden in Islam. So she's breaking a taboo in talking about it. She also admits she's been hitting her daughter in fits of rage. Next week will be Ramadan, she says. I hope I can make the meal. I have nothing in the house. These women are in a UN mental health clinic, an escape from being trapped at home with jobless husbands and no more than four hours of electricity per day. I'm nervous about raising a subject as sensitive as suicide. How many of you would say you, you have even thought about taking your own lives? But to my surprise, more than a third put their hands up. One woman says she's tried to kill herself twice, though Gaza's leading psychologist says there's no data on how bad the problem is. We hear about like around 500 uh, uh, attempts you know, per year, something like that, especially if between the year 2015 and 16 and 17. Go back just four or five years earlier, you never hear of suicide. So the question is not that the rate is low or high. The question is why at this moment Palestinians in Gaza start to commit suicide. The answer, he says, is that so many doors have been shut. An open-air prison camp, he calls this, a ticking time bomb of despair. At the end of an alleyway near Khan Yunis city, 
Hada Jamus is still confined in official mourning with her children. Her husband had been depressed and was then killed by Israeli gunfire during a border protest. He had scavenged tin cans to feed a family which now struggles to sleep at night. Every night they have nightmares. They tell me they see their father. I myself am afraid as I try to calm them down. There's no one to support them. I can't cope alone. 70 years on from Israel's creation, Palestinians will soon be back at this windswept border, demanding the right to return. And if those protests change nothing for people here, imagine what that could do to their already fragile mental health. Prisoners not just of Gaza, but of their own troubled minds as well.